Okay, it looks like we are back live. Uh, this is a joint meeting with Senate Health and Welfare and House Health Care. Uh, and before we introduce our guest, um, I'm going to have my the Senate committee introduce themselves, and then I'm going to turn it over to uh, Representative Houghton uh, in the House. So. Good morning, everybody. This is Martine larock ulick I live in Burlington, and I represent Chittenden Central. Good morning. This is Dave Weeks, uh, representing Rutland County. I live in Proctor. Ginny Lyons, chair of the Senate Health uh, and Welfare Committee from Chittenden Southeast, and I live in Williston. Terry Williams, representing Rutland County from Poultry. And joining us in a, just a bit will be Senator Hardy from Addison County. So, uh, Representative Howden, I'm turning it over to you and your committee. Great, thank you. So we'll do introductions as well. I'm gonna start with Alan. Alan DeMar, representing Enosburg and Montgomery. Alyssa Black, representing Essex. Lori Houghton, City of Essex Junction. Tommy McFawn, representing Barrytown and the part of Williamstown. Mari Cordes, Lincoln, Moncton, Starksboro, and Bristol. Uh, Leslie Goldman, Window 3, Rockingham, Westminster, and Brookline, which is the Bells Falls area. Art Peterson, uh, representing Rutland District 2, which is Clarendon, Wallington, West Rutland, and a piece of Rutland Town. Great, and we'll be having a couple others join us in a couple minutes. Um, so welcome, Dr. Holcomb. I had the pleasure of meeting with, meeting with Dr. Holcomb earlier this year. Um, and for anyone who's had experience in the University of Vermont Cancer, Cancer Center, like my family has, um, they really do amazing work. And I'm gonna turn it over to you, Dr. Holcomb, to introduce yourself and tell us about the Cancer Center. Great, thank you very much. Well, uh, my name's Randy Holcomb, and uh, I've been here for about a year and a half as director of the University of Vermont Cancer Center. I'd like to thank the chairs and members uh, of the committees for the opportunity uh, to speak with you today and tell you a little bit about the exciting things that are going on here uh, at the Cancer Center. Um, I do have uh, someone here with me off camera, sort of stage right, uh, is Kate Strautmeyer, uh, who is our Director of Communications and Community Outreach. Uh, really, I just hope uh, that this is uh, informational for you to tell you uh, a little bit about the Cancer Center that you may or may not uh, know about, and, uh, and then to leave plenty of time for as well. I wanted to start as I usually do uh, with our mission, and our mission is really to reduce the burden of cancer through research, clinical care, community outreach, and education. We actually serve uh, the entire state uh, of Vermont and Northern New York. Um, so that's about 18,000 uh, square miles uh, that we have, uh, that we feel is the area where we really need to make uh, an impact. And most of that impact, it has to do with cancer prevention, cancer screening, but also cancer treatment as we, uh, as we do that uh, here at the uh, cancer centers. We have four pillars to the cancer center. Each of them is really equally important. The first is clinical care, and that's to provide the best clinical care possible for people that are affected uh, by cancer and to bring new and novel treatments uh, to bear so that patients can benefit from it. Just as an example of that, we'll be launching our program with cellular therapy and CAR T cells uh, sometime uh, later uh, this year, uh, probably in a few months. This is a new therapy um, that hasn't been available to Vermonters uh, in the past unless they went out of state. And uh, it has the potential uh, to provide long-term remissions and perhaps cures uh, for patients with refractory leukemia uh, and lymphoma. Our second pillar is education. We're part of the university here and uh, our mission is to provide cancer-related educational uh, opportunities really from high school all the way up to uh, uh, junior faculty and uh, uh, junior professionals. Just as an example, we have a summer research program, which is available for undergraduates, graduate students, and medical students uh, to spend some time in our cancer center laboratories and learn about uh, cancer research. We also this year 
had our first career days in cancer, where we invited over 100 local high school students uh, to come and learn about uh, different career opportunities uh, related to cancer care and cancer research. Our third pillar is community outreach and engagement. This is especially uh, important uh, to all of us here and especially uh, for me uh, because my feeling is that there's no reason to have a cancer center if we don't serve the community where we're located. And so reaching out to the community and providing um, uh, to their needs is uh, of utmost importance. As an example of that, we, uh, we partnered with Dartmouth uh, to do a statewide um, lung cancer screening program over this uh, past year. That was also a partnership with the Department of Health and the organization Vermonters Taking Action uh, Against Cancer to encourage people to get lung cancer screening if appropriate and also to provide education about lung cancer screening. We've also formed a community advisory board uh, here at the Cancer Center with representatives from across the state uh, and also some um, uh, of the representatives uh, in the um, uh, Vermont uh, legislature to provide input to us about what the needs of the community are so that we can, we can address those. And as an example of their utility, uh, we recently presented options for a research program providing nutritional support for cancer patients, which would be statewide. And uh, the Community Advisory Board has endorsed that proposal and uh, will be submitting that for funding to the National Cancer Institute. <laughs> research. Our research is, uh, spans from fundamental laboratory research uh, to population-based uh, research focused on cancer screening and cancer prevention, to clinical trials, which takes us back into the uh, clinical arena. Clinical trials really represent the opportunity for patients here in Vermont to get tomorrow's therapy today. And so we know that this is an essential component of cancer care and the way that we make progress in uh, developing new cures and new uh, treatments uh, for people with cancer. The Cancer Center has all of these things going on at the same time. Uh, it has a significant uh, impact across the state, an economic uh, impact. We recently had an economic benefit analysis uh, performed by a national uh, organization, which showed that uh, the Cancer Center activities generate about $65 million of economic activity from its clinical uh, component. I think what's even more interesting is that our research component generates an additional $20 million of economic activity uh, for the state of Vermont. And this research component is really funded by dollars that come from the federal government. So these are, these are really uh, a tremendous benefit to Vermont because it's generating a lot of economic activity here uh, without having to uh, put the resources in locally, bringing the resources uh, from Washington to DC. You may have heard that uh, uh, the University of Vermont Cancer Center used to have NCI designation. Uh, they lost that designation in uh, 2012. And uh, I have been asked by uh, President Garamella and uh, Dean Page uh, to reclaim that uh, designation uh, for the Cancer Center here and for the people of Vermont. Uh, we are working to uh, improve the quality of the patient care uh, that we uh, deliver including clinical trials and offering tomorrow's therapies today. We're building our research uh, base and targeting problems related to cancer that are specifically a concern of our population. So looking at breast cancer and lung cancer and melanoma, these are very significant problems here uh, in the state of Vermont. And we wanna make sure that our, our research uh, focuses on those along with other aspects of uh, cancer development. We're expanding our education for students and junior professionals, and as I mentioned, enhancing our community outreach and engagement so that we can respond uh, to the needs uh, of the community. So the, the Cancer Center, uh, most people think of the Cancer Center as a clinical entity, someplace where people come to get care, and we definitely are that, but I think we're much more than that. We're also an educational entity, uh, we are a research entity, 
and you're an entity that uh, strives to serve the community uh, where we are located. And so that's a little summary of the Cancer Center. And uh, I didn't want to take too much time so I could leave lots of time for uh, questions. And I would be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Great. Thank you, Dr. Holcomb. That was a great overview. I have a couple questions I'll start with. I'll let um, our committee ask some questions and then we'll turn it back over to Senator Lyons. So I do just want to say uh, when I met with Dr. Holcomb, we spent a lot of time talking about nutrition and cancer. And so I am thrilled to hear that the advisory committee is endorsing that and hopefully it will move forward. You know, you had talked a little bit about, and I don't know if you want to share a little bit, um, your history, the fact that there's no no research like this happening, am I correct? With nutrition and cancer? So this is, uh, this is uh, an area uh, related to um, cancer care and cancer research that really has major deficiencies. And people have not been doing a sufficient amount of, uh, of research to understand uh, the benefits of nutrition uh, for cancer patients. The trial that we're uh, proposing to the National Cancer Institute, which is actually a $4 million grant that I'll be submitting uh, next month, um, uh, is, is to provide nutritional counseling for all newly diagnosed cancer patients. We have only 2.4 registered dietitians who are serving 2,500 uh, 2, new cancer cases across the state that are receiving ambulatory or outpatient cancer care. It's definitely not sufficient. Um, and uh, it's impossible for them to provide the nutritional counseling to all cancer patients and only those who are having specific difficulties with swallowing and digestion uh, really get those consultations at the moment because of the shortage in the workforce. We, what we wanna do is uh, create an infrastructure so that we can provide that counseling for all newly diagnosed patients. And we're also going to partner with the economics department here at the University of Vermont so that we can do a cost effectiveness analysis of this program and hopefully show that it will actually be cost effective to provide this nutri nutritional intervention upfront. And with that kind of information, we may be able to impact cancer policy and also insurance reimbursement for registered dietitians. So that's, that's our goal, that's our hope. And uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed that uh, the National Cancer Institute is interested in supporting uh, this uh, program here that we'll be proposing. Great, thank you for that. Any questions, Joe? Yeah, uh, Joe Andriano from Orwell. Um, I'm curious about, you'd mentioned this five-year plan to achieve National Cancer Institute designation. Um, just in, in sort of a, a broad overview, what sort of steps should be taken on that? And is there any support you would need for that? So uh, I, I, I want to be uh, in full disclosure. I'm not asking for any support here uh, today, so I'll just, uh, I'll just start with that. Um, it, it will definitely take uh, resources, uh, and uh, I've been working with uh, both President Garamella and Dean Page to make sure we have the resources uh, to do this. We have a few things that we need to do. We need to build our, our research base and uh, expand uh, the uh, activities in basic laboratory research as well as population-based uh, uh, research. Uh, to qualify uh, for uh, NCI designation. We need to expand our clinical trials activities uh, and enroll more patients uh, onto clinical trials. Part of how we're doing that is, is working to expand our clinical trials network to other sites across the state so that uh, people can get care locally and have access to some of these, uh, these clinical trials uh, close to home rather than having to uh, travel to uh, Burlington uh, to the cancer center here. Um, this does, um, uh, when you get NCI designation, it affirms that you're in the top 4% of cancer centers uh, in the country. It allows you access to an additional approximately $5 million uh, a year of NIH funding that otherwise would not be coming into the state of Vermont. It helps us attract uh, talented clinicians, researchers, and educators. So it is, a, it is a very big step, and I think it will be extremely beneficial um, uh, if we can uh, reclaim that uh, designation. I've been, through, I've been through this process a few times. When I was uh, deputy director of the Cancer Center at Mount Sinai and director of the uh, clinical cancer uh, program there, 
we got our first uh, NCI designation. Mount Sinai invested $100 million to get that NCI designation. Um, I was also at the University of Hawaii where we renewed a designation that was uh, very much uh, in jeopardy uh, when I was director there. Uh, there was a lot of investment that went into uh, that as well and supported uh, there by the, uh, by the university as well as the legislature. So it does take resources. Um, I think that we're on a path uh, where uh, we've identified the resources that we need and uh, we can get there. I think it will take about another uh, three to four years before we're ready to apply for that NCI designation because it does take some time to uh, build those programs, recruit some new faculty. Thank you. Any other questions in this room? Leslie? Thank you and thank you for this work. Um, it's important. I, I'm interested in what you're thinking about prevention. Um, and we know that prevention, that would be ideal, right? So no one got cancer at all. So I, there's been a ton of work on cigarettes um, and smoking. And I know that lung cancer is the number one cancer in Vermont, um, colorectal cancer. So I'm wondering what you're thinking about, what does prevention mean to you on a popul population level? Where do we see that impact? So um, we do lots of things in that area. And I think uh, uh, prevention uh, and screening, which goes hand in hand with, uh, with prevention in, in reducing um, late stage uh, disease by finding a disease early are critically important from a population uh, standpoint. Uh, the tobacco researchers here at the University of Vermont are part of the Cancer Center. We work with them uh, closely. We work with our clinicians that are uh, focused on uh, lung cancer uh, screening. Um, a lot of that involves education um, and education about risk factors uh, related to um, uh, the development of uh, lung cancer. We've had some extensive discussions in our community advisory board uh, about that. And we have a representative, Chief Stevens, from the Abenaki uh, tribe. Um, and uh, we are discussing whether we can create a program for them, uh, for example, uh, that takes into account their, their cultural uh, significance of tobacco, but also reduces their risk for development of uh, lung cancer. One of the things that we're also trying to do is uh, create uh, an out, what I call an outreach van, uh, where we can go out into the uh, community, into uh, rural areas across the state, um, and provide uh, cancer education. We're already doing that locally here, but I think it's more important that we do it across the rural areas of Vermont. Because in rural Vermont, people who develop cancer have a significantly higher mortality than the people who develop cancer in a more urban area. And we need to reduce that disparity so that we can achieve uh, cancer equity and cancer outcomes. And a lot of that has to do with bringing information to the community about risk factors and how to reduce the risk for developing cancer. So I think cancer prevention is, is critically important uh, part of the uh, component of that uh, will be early detection uh, through screening. All of those things can reduce the burden uh, of cancer. And, and really, we'd like to put ourselves out of business and, uh, and get all of this done so that we don't have to worry about um, difficult treatments that people have to undergo. Um, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be working to try to reduce the uh, disparities, especially uh, for our rural areas in the state. Thank you. Great, Senator Lyons, so we'll turn it over to you. Oh, terrific. Um, thank you, uh, Representative Houghton, and thank you, Dr. Holcomb, for being here with us today. This has been terrific. It's good to see you again. And um, I'll just, I'll ask a, a couple of questions. Uh, our committee, just to FYI, our committee will need to disappear at 11.15, so we'll be able to go until then. But I do have a couple questions, and then i ask the rest of the committee if they will also um, have questions. So I understand your, the interest in looking at the cancers that predominate in the state. Is there anything that is uh, gender specific, for example, uh, prostate cancer, or is there anything related to pancreatic cancer? I, I, every time we read obituaries, we see pancreatic cancer, or we see prostate cancer. Are those um, interests of the cancer center, or how do you deal with the, 
maybe an increase in, in those uh, particular types or others? Yeah, so we have a few cancers that are that are particular relevance. Obviously, uh, lung cancer and breast cancer are, are the leading causes of cancer uh, in, in the state, but we have some focus there. Um, pancreatic cancer is less common than those other cancers, but it is we do have a higher rate here in Vermont, an incidence rate than uh, most states across the, uh, the country. So this is something that we are particularly focused on and also trying to understand the genetics of pancreatic cancer because uh, there are some genetic predispositions and we have a um, robust cancer genetics program here. And we would like to really take that out into the community so that we can understand uh, what um, contributions the genetic factors may have in development of pancreatic cancer. Another cancer that's a, a very high rate, uh, incidence rate here in Vermont is uh, melanoma. Yeah. The reasons for that are not completely uh, clear. And so we're doing some laboratory research on that, as well as some uh, population-based research to try to understand what the, uh, what the etiologies of that are. Prostate cancer uh, is a very common cancer uh, for men. It's, a, it's not one of the leading uh, causes of, uh, of death because a lot of uh, men can live with prostate cancer uh, for quite a while. But it is a significant problem here and we are working to build our program. I would say that that's one area here in the cancer center uh, that I've identified as one that we need to uh, have more strength and, and build because uh, we don't have the fundamental or population-based research focused on uh, prostate cancer that I think uh, we will need to have. So that's one area of growth. Uh, that, uh, Thank you. Uh, just one other quick question. It's probably not a quick answer, but <laughs> the, the, the question about the cost of chemotherapy, I mean, it does... It just seems so unfathomable that someone has to spend thirty or forty thousand or fifty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars a year uh, for a cure. Are you engaged at all in looking at prescription drug costs for you know chemotherapy and treatment overall? Well, that's a tough problem uh, because the new therapies that come out uh, generally have a cost set by the um, uh, and approved by the FDA. And um, we pretty much have to pay that, um, and insurance has to cover that uh, to provide those therapies uh, for patients. One of the things that, that we've tried to do is to expand our clinical trials portfolio so that we can get some of these medications that are so very expensive, paid for by the pharmaceutical industry as part of a clinical trial. And this actually will reduce the cost um, that has to be paid uh, for uh, for care. I think that uh, overall, there are a lot of changes that can be made in cancer care delivery. That's an area of my personal uh, research. And uh, we are trying to uh, uh, expand our health services research uh, component of the cancer center uh, to try to address some of those issues like cost and health policy and how we can uh, better provide uh, cancer care across a broad uh, geographic area. Thank you. Uh, Senator Gulick has a question. Hello, thank you, Dr. Holcomb. Um, as you know, we have many uh, buildings, especially in our cities and towns that were built in the 60s and 70s that are riddled with toxins and poisons ranging from lead to asbestos to PCBs. And I'm wondering if you ever weigh in on ridding those buildings of cancer-causing toxins, or if you are at all active in ensuring that new construction is safe? So we aren't directly related uh, to, um, uh, to construction. I would say that we are doing research on uh, environmental um, uh, contaminants that may contribute to the development of cancer. We have several researchers who've been looking at um, uh, polyphenols and, uh, and, and PCBs and other compounds that may be present both within uh, lake water um, as well as the soil uh, across, uh, across the state. We're trying to see how that uh, uh, relates to the development of cancer. And we've actually published some recent uh, articles about the risk of childhood leukemia uh, related to exposure to some of those compounds. I think the more research we do, uh, the, uh, the greater the base of knowledge we will have so that that can affect uh, policy uh, in construction 
and uh, and hopefully make safer buildings in the future. Okay, thank you. Questions? Senator Harvey. Uh, thank you, um, and thank you, Dr. Um, I, I was struck by the comment you made about the disparity in outcomes for people living in rural areas versus more urban areas. Um, and I was also happy to hear that you're working with Chief um, Stevens. Um, so I'm wondering how, how else are you sort of applying an equity lens to the work that you're doing to make sure that we can narrow the gap between those outcomes for people um, based on where they live and their um, race or ethnicity, et cetera? I would say that almost all our population-based research, which is pretty robust here at, at the Cancer Center, um, has a disparities and, and equity focus. Um, we understand uh, that we have uh, uh, a large rural population here that we serve um, and that the mortality rates uh, are just far too high uh, in those areas. Some of that has to do with late diagnosis, but a lot of it uh, has to do with other factors and may have to do with some uh, environmental uh, exposures as well as they relate uh, to agriculture. So we're partnering with the, um, uh, with the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences on some projects as well to, uh, to look at some of those uh, issues about uh, soil contaminants. Um, we, we know that uh, the rural population is something that we can particularly address here, that other cancer centers in the NCI uh, portfolio cannot address because many of them do not have such a, a large rural population. And so it's a major focus of almost all the uh, research that we do. That's great. And if you have any policy recommendations along those lines, whether they're related to toxins or uh, health ac healthcare access, et cetera, that would be helpful because as someone who represents a rural district, it, it is really discouraging to hear that there's that disparity. I, I am. I will bring forward uh, policy recommendations as we as we get them. Be happy to do that, and very much uh, uh, welcome that request. Great, thank you. Terrific. That's terrific. Good. Any other questions? Okay. Um, you know, unfortunately, Senate Health and Welfare is going to have to uh, sign off. We have another. Please. Talk. We do as well. Okay, so we are finished. Go ahead, Representative Houghton, finish us, finish us off. Great. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Holcomb, for your time. On behalf of both of our committees, thank you for the work you're doing, and we look forward to hearing more from you in the near future, I'm sure. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you today. Thanks. Have a great day, everyone. We can go off air, Claire and Alex.